With the release of the DJI 03 system, we also seen a load of new frames specifically designed to be used with it. One of them was this, the Master 5 HD from Speedybee. This 5-inch freestyle frame was specifically designed for the 03 system. It has wider camera plates, props out of view, as well as a built-in heatsink. Whilst this frame was very nice, it wasn't perfect. It did require you to use a longer camera cable on your O3 e unit, and there were some concerns about the strength of the frame in a crash due to the way they set up the front end. A little while after releasing this, Speedy B gave us a new Bind and Fly version of the Master 5 called the Master 5 HD version 2 Bind and Fly. This is an O3 Bind and Fly drone, but it actually has a new version 2 of that original Master 5 frame. Today, we're going to take a look at the standalone version of that Master 5 version 2 frame for the O3 system. I'm going to put it together and show you the differences between the version 2 and the version 1, and hopefully give you an idea if you should consider buying this frame or not. Now, just to be clear up front, SpeedyB did send me this frame for free. However, they've not paid me to make this video. They've not seen this video before it's been published. And as always, my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so lifting the lid, what we'll do is take a quick look at what you get. I'm going to then assemble it and then I'll show you the differences at the end. Now, when you get in the box, you'll find inside they do give you this nice instruction leaflet, which shows you how to put the frame together. If we move that out the way. We then have some foam packaging and all the parts for the frame inside. Now, Speedy B do a real nice job of packaging their frames. They lay everything out nicely. And what you'll see in here is that we have multiple different bits as well, depending on the setup we want to use just like the original master 5 you can see down here that we've got different isolators which have different viscosities or different sort of how strong the rubber or silicon is for removing the vibration on your frame on the bind and fly speedy b went with the clear one in the bottom rather than the yellow one and that's probably what i'm going to do in this build now just lifting out all of the parts you can see we've got our carbon plates we've got our camera plates there these are made of tpu these are not silicon and then we've got all the other accessories in the bottom and what's nice about this actually compared to the other one is they also include some of the little extras that we saw on the bind and fly so we've got our little buzzer down there as well they've got the side plates which were on the bind and fly as well with the leds so if you do use this with a speedy b stack you'll be able to actually install them we've then got all of the metalwork and fittings down here as well as some additional connections they even give us some cables and then we've got all of the other bits the cnc pieces down there we've got our isolators our rubber bits and our arms down here just again everything located inside nicely now, as I mentioned, we have the different strength isolators at the bottom. These are a bit different to the ones that came in the original frame. The other ones were silicon. This feels more like a harder plastic. If I just bend that, they don't feel quite the same, but they're certainly not as soft as they were in the original kit. We then also have all of the other parts. So you can see there we've got the side pieces held in place we've got more pieces of carbon we've got our battery strap and all the other bits we've got our 3d printed parts for the frame as well we've got our nut and then at the back here is our heat sink which is for the o3 system now I'm not going to go through this build step by step. What I'm going to do is go off and put it together and then I'll come back and show you what the frame is like. Now, just before I start the assembly, I just wanted to show you how nicely Speedy B label everything up. I've put all of the mainframe parts into the bottom of the box there, and I just wanted to show you how they've got all of the screws labeled up. They give you all of the sizes and everything, and just it's nice how easily laid out everything is. So you then can simply follow the instructions I provide, but it's easy to find the right length of screw you need because it's all labeled up clearly for you.
Now, before I go any further, I just want to show you something that's been improved on the V2 frame compared to the original V1. One of the complaints on this one was in a crash, you could have this front end fold in because it was mounted with two screws at the bottom, two screws to the top plate, but there was no support here, which meant this could cantilever over in a heavy crash. However, that has been improved on the version 2 frame. You've still got the two screws at the bottom. You'll still have the two screws at the top, but you can now see that there are two supports, one on either side, that come down to the center plate, meaning that this front end can no longer twist in in a hard front end crash. Okay, so the Speedy B Master 5 version 2 is complete. Now, whilst it does look similar to the original frame, there are some key differences. The first, you'll notice if I put the original below, is actually the length because it's a little bit shorter. Now, this is where, as I said earlier, you now have the ability to use the standard O3 camera cable. You don't need to use the longer one. If I just pop them both up next to each other, just level them up at the front. Whilst the TPU sections go out roughly the same, you can see that the frame itself is shorter. If I just tilt it there, you can see this one stops there, whereas the original one there goes out a little bit longer. There are also plenty of other key differences. So, first of all, looking at the front, we've got that extra support now on the CNC section up here. We've now got TPU camera plates rather than this board, this fiber board or plastic that they used before. That's going to offer some vibration isolation. We've now got those side covers compared to the original frame. We didn't have that on these. These are obviously optional. They have those built-in LEDs. I haven't fully screwed them in place. I can open them up so you can choose to use these or you could build the frame without them but they are included as standard already. We still have that heat sink in the bottom for the O3 ear unit but the O3 on this now has been moved in closer to the center stack area so if I put that other one there you can see the gap between the heat sink and the center stack is longer on the original frame compared to this one and again it's the same at the front the camera is much further ahead in that original frame than it is in this one and again it's that change that now allows for that O3 ear unit to fit without any problems so for instance if I just pop that there grab an O3 ear unit a moment and just to show you if I just mount that there where it would go in the back you can see there's plenty of length on the standard cable to be able to fit it overall though there are a lot of similarities the arms are a bit different they're a bit thinner on the new one compared to the original one but that's not something I think is really going to have any structural effect and overall it's a nice freestyle frame for the O3 system. I'm again not going to say this is a complete basher frame because I don't believe these are. These are more cinematic O3 frames like we've seen from the Bind and Fly version but the nice thing now is that you do have this available to order. It has the upgrades over that original frame but it still retains a lot of the other nice features that that frame had like that grip on the bottom for protecting the carbon fibre. You've also now got some TPU pieces in here as well well for holding the capacitor and additional electronics like that buzzer and overall what you're getting here is your own build version of what they're selling as part of that bind and fly. Now just to quickly go over some of the technical details as you see the frame here I've weighed it and it's coming in at 168 grams. If we look at the size lengthwise we're talking about 230 mil end to end with the TPU mount on the back or the frame itself from the very front to the end of the carbon fiber is coming in at about 195 mil. Now if we look at the arms we have a thickness on these of 5 mil. The top plate is 2.5 mil and the bottom plate is coming in at 2 mil 
and if we just check it at the front because there is a different plate from front to back it's actually going to be a bit difficult for me to measure at the front because i've put the protection strip on with the protection strip it's coming in at three mil so i would say it's actually a two mil plate let me just see if i can get on the end 2.5 is what I would say on the front one there as well. Now, stack height wise, if we open it up, you're going to have the ability to get a stack in of a maximum height from bottom to top of 22 mil to the very top. So you're going to have 20 mil stack height available with a 2 mil gap at the top for, say, your battery strap. Now, mounting-wise for the flight controller, as I've said, we have 30 by 30 as well as a 20 by 20 mount there. Earlier, I might have actually said 25, but it's 20, so you've got 30 by 30 or 20 by 20, depending on what you want. At the back here, we've got 25 by 25 as well as 20 by 20 available for the air unit too. Another thing I just want to mention quickly is the accessories that SpeedyB do give you with these frames, the 3D printed ones. So you've got those standoffs on the arms down the bottom here. We've got our antenna mount on the back, GPS mount. And they also have another type of mount for your antennas if you want to. We've got a GoPro mount included, some additional frame protection up front. And again, they give you all of the little bits of an accessories that you need, including some battery straps as well if you need them. These frames are obviously designed to be used with the Speedy B stacks and they make some really nice stacks in fact for FPV, some of the best price stacks available on the market today as well. However, you're not limited to using those Speedy B stacks on this frame either. You can use this with any normal stack. You've got your usual mounting pattern down there as well. You can simply choose the hole you want to use. You've got all that additional mounting options at the back there as well. We've got the O3 mounting, but you could mount a Vista, another air unit, it, or even an ear unit from another manufacturer as well if you wanted to the frame gives you plenty of options you're really not limited by anything you're not restricted to using the o3 system you're not restricted to using speedy b stacks but if you do choose to go down that road everything's going to fit nicely and you know you're going to get a really nice build now, whilst I'm not building this into a quad in this video, if you wanted to know what one would look like, it's going to be this, because again, this is the bind and fly version of it, and this is exactly what you're able to do with this frame. Now, I do have a dedicated video on this bind and fly. I actually really like this quad. They built this up with the Eco 2 motors, with the O3 ear unit, and obviously a Speedy B stack in there as well. So if you wanted to buy a ready to fly version of this you can you can see here it has literally all the same pieces as that kit I've just showed you but again if you don't want to go down that road you can just simply buy the frame and to build it yourself Okay, so to share with you my thoughts on the SpeedyB Master 5 HD version 2. Now, I haven't actually flown the frame that I've built, but I have obviously flown the Bind and Fly, which is the same frame. Now, as I said in that video, this quad flies very well for a more cinematic style O3 quad. It certainly isn't a bando basher in my opinion. It is in that frame style of those cinematic for either longer range FPV or just filming FPV with the O3 ear unit. That's not to say you couldn't bando bash it but these frames in my opinion really are not designed for that now there are no complaints overall with this frame apart from i would have liked to have seen silicon inserts for the camera at the front rather than tpu yes the tpu is an upgrade on the previous version but as i mentioned in my original review of the bind and fly version and i will put a link to that in the description i was still getting a little bit of jello on the footage and i think silicon inserts might have been better to help prevent that we know o3 is super sensitive with regards to this and silicon just helps remove any possible vibrations getting through or at least it helps reduce it compared to the likes of tpu but that isn't to say you're going to have problems with this frame overall i think speedy b have done a really nice job in the v2 and it's great that you can now get it in a bind and fly version or a standalone frame version should you wish to order it 
Now, price-wise, this frame comes in at $69.99, or basically just under $70, and you get everything that I've shown you here today with that frame for that price. As I said earlier, you can use it with a SpeedyB stack if you want to, but you could use it with any other stack as well. But if you did use it with SpeedyB, you have those LED options on the side too. Although, if you're using another flight stack, you could sort of do a modification to get that working, but it would be somewhat plug-and-play with SpeedyB. Now, if you're interested in getting one there will be a link to it in the description of this video i want to say a massive thank you to speedy b for sending this one over to us to have a look at and if you're interested in supporting the channel to allow us to keep making content like this in the future whether it be reviews on frames or anything else please also consider checking out the link to my patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description it's only through the support of my patrons am i able to keep making content on this channel and whilst we do receive products from manufacturers like speedy b to review we do buy buy an awful lot of the products we talk about, including the DJI O3 and digital FPV system, as well as the Avatar system that I have discussed on this channel as well. And if you're interested in supporting us to allow us to keep making content like that in the future, all of the RF testing, all of the deep dives, please do consider checking out the links. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. I'm really interested in hearing what you think about this new version of the frame. As I've said, there's a link to it in the description if you want to get one. Stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.